What's up, Heat One? As welcome back to the latest episode of the Heat One Motorsports Podcast, home of unprofessional opinions and the truth. TW, what is happening, mate? We're running a couple of blokes short this week due to some uh, medical medical issues. Medical. <laughs> but how are you going? I'm good. Going good, bear. Yeah, no, good. Mm. Going all right. Week's gone quick. Yep. These Grand Prix back to back to back. It's mm. they come around real fast, don't they? It does, and. Unfortunately, because of that, we're going to bang these. We've got two episodes to do today. We're going to bang them out pretty hard. Yeah, right But, um, yeah, Anders, is, he's, he's done the sicky. No, has he? He's caught in sick. He mustn't have many left, has he? <laughs> he <laughs> definitely doesn't have many left. But he's, um, he's gone down with the gastro. Oh, that's nothing yeah, worse, is it? rocked him big time. Nothing worse. I, um, I was on the computer this morning just confirming, you know, about today. Yeah. He goes, I've been on the on the in the bathroom for on the last the room, yeah. since two two thirty this morning. No good. And I messaged him at about four thirty. So he was yeah. He was in the in the trenches. Yeah, no, nah, it's not that's not, that's not <laughs> real good, is it? He was um Feel for him. Yeah, he he wasn't real um real happy and, and Bevo's on night shift tonight, so is he? Yes. Ah, uh, don't you love that too? Oh I don't miss it. No. <laughs> Definitely don't miss I've it. I've just had we've just like we haven't had much of a spell from the rain mm. the last few weeks. It's been terrible. When you're in shit house. When you're working in an Bevo's doing the same in Anders. When you're working in an open cup coal mine, mm. when it rains, it's just a mess. Yeah. And you've got, you know, big machinery mm. driving around on dirt, mud roads mm. and dozers trying to repair stuff. And it's just not a real nice place to no, be. No, no. And then everyone's morale's down. Everyone's morale's down. No one wants to be there, especially when it's shit house like that. And they've got to, they've got to try to keep moving dirt mm. and moving coal. And mm. so, the yeah, the operators are battling emotionally and supervisors are pressured to to keep the show going yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. just a it's a i don't it's miss a that i don't miss that yeah anyway. so that's that's what i've sort of been dealing with the last few weeks every every shift at work's been wet yeah right but um you know just do it safe and got to keep on keeping on you don't know, look forward to that shower in the morning oh. at work and God, yeah. That's and like I love what I do. I love the job on the farm, mm. but I still get in the car and go. Fuck! I can't wait to get home get to the home. family. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better. Yeah, nothing better than coming home to the family. Yeah, that's it, mate. But um, yep. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, Anders will not be here. He will be here in spirit. He's actually uh sent in his Ozaki eight predictions, and uh, Bebo okay. sent them in as well by voicemail. Oh, nice. So I'm looking forward to hearing those. Oh, right. I haven't actually put mine together yet. Well, we'll do that on the next episode. Yeah, yeah. We'll do cool. it on the preview of um, Landshut. Yeah, right. I'm excited for that because you've spent many years we know ride, Landshut. riding around Landshut quite well. We live there briefly too. Mm. Mm. So all that will be next episode. But let's get straight into it. Mm-hmm. Now, I was wetting my pants mm-hmm. all morning. I got up in the a.m., I watched this live. Yeah. It was amazing. So Warsaw, round two of the FIM Speedway Grand Prix. First of all, massive congratulations yeah, yeah. to JD. Totally. Amazing, mate. Well done, mate. Amazing. Does it get any better for us at the moment? Last week with Jack. Yeah. This week with Jason. Yeah. And still top two. We've got both. You yeah. know, J- uh, Jack's tied second with Bartos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't get much better, does it, for, as an Australian? I mean, I'm selfishly. I'm so proud. I'm a proud Aussie. I'm a proud Novocastrian, even the Knights one on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking stoked. Yeah, right. Oh. So stoked. <laughs> now, look, yeah, we're all celebrating down here, both Jack and, and, and Doyley. Mm. Um, yeah, I messaged uh, Doyley the other day and just said, look, Australia's all proud. Mm. You now we're proud of Jack. Um, for the boys to go over and, and, and one, two currently in the World Championship after two rounds, both of them have those nights where they mm. just, everything was going great for them. Yep. Yep. Um, Dorley had his night the other night, making some good starts. Well, mate, actually, that's probably not a, that's probably not the truth. He he made some good starts, but he was a bit hot and uh, hot and cold, and yeah. but made some fantastic first corners. Mm, he did put himself in some good positions. Yeah, and um, yeah. One thing I I had noticed when I was watching JD, remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about why Smarslik is so good, mm. and he he seems to gain ground mm-hmm. on the straight. Yeah, and everyone's horsepower is very similar. Everyone's mm. bikes are very similar. How does he seem to have that much extra speed in that you know mm. sixty meters from corner to corner? Doily had that. Mm. He was. I did notice. He that, was yeah. three bike lengths behind, and from the from the exit of corner two yeah. to the start of corner three, he was wheel to wheel. I think I've seen that in the semi with Jack. I think Jack might have trapped him from gate four. He did, and sort of had it over. 
Doily, and then coming out of corner two, going down the back straight, Doily somehow done a smart leg. Yep. And managed to keep keep the speed up mm. and um, actually moved you quite wide into that corner three and four. But that's the old Doily of 16 and 17. Yeah. I, I, I was amazed back then when he won his first world championship. He was doing that. He was coming out of the corners. Didn't seem to be doing anything anything um, spectacular. Just sat on the back of the bike and the bike took off. Mm. And he was winning races for fun mm. back then. Mm. And that's over the years since then. That's why I've said to you a few times and I've said to a few of the boys, I said, why do you get that? Get that 16 motor yeah. back in your bike, Jason. <laughs> yeah, Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he was winning races for fun. Mm. And exactly that. He yeah. was just pulling down the straight mm. like we've seen Marslet do the last few years. Yeah. So it was nice to see that with Jason mm. this year. Yeah. And just you said it perfectly. Him. It was the JD of 16 and 17. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Like He's like a young kid again. Mm. You know, in the pits, smiling with his mechanics and whatnot. And yeah. I think Kelvin and Chris did make reference again that um, him and – uh, Lingram were the old boys, yep. and they were out there having fun like school kids. Yep. It's it is really nice to see. It's just it's yeah. just on the mind, you see. Yep. Now we, numbers and age. Yep. Greg Hancock went on to to well after forty. Yep. Um, it's it's a mind game, mm. and you now if you're there and you're prepared to put put the effort in, mm. you, you don't lose your ability. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And he dropped one point mm. all night, and even in that one point, I I think he did lose out to. Oh, I'm gonna. Maybe it was Wozniak. I can't remember. I can't remember who exactly he, he lost out to. I think it was, yeah. It might have been Wozniak. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he did, apart from that one hiccup, yeah. he didn't look like he broke a sweat, mm. really. He was under a pressure a few times. He was leading the race. He didn't, he didn't win races by half a straight length like we did see some riders. Um, I think Wolfie took off once and even Bewley, I think, took mm. off once. But then they had absolute shockers the next race. That's a bit confusing to yep. see why riders that level are doing that. Yeah. But Dolly was consistent. Yeah. Consistent first laps, getting getting amongst it. Sure. And um, yeah, log and laps. He I, was, I love yeah, that. Song. Log and laps. Log and laps, and yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, apart from Doily, a couple of blokes who I want to talk about. Um, I gave this guy a huge rap leading into Warsaw. Yeah. His last year's winner. <laughs> Freddie. He had a shocker. Freddie Lindgren. Yeah. He had a shocker. Yeah. And there was one there was one one of the one of his heats. Um, you saw at, right when the, the green light went on and everyone's revving their bike, you yeah. saw him like Yeah. He was like giving it some and it had nothing. Have you had any mail of what his bike done? No. I'm only assuming fuel. It looked like fuel. It didn't yeah. he didn't it's not like like when Buley stored the bike mm. last year. Voyans maybe yeah. apparently he stalled it when he was doing a couple of clutch uh, yeah. clutch drops or whatever. Um, it didn't look like that. It was looked purely like it was completely out of Freddie's control. Freddie control, yeah, yeah. It looked like fuel the way he was working the throttle. Mm. She she just died on him. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see whether that was a fuel tap or very unlikely a, a blockage. Yeah, yeah. Could be human could, human error. Could, could be yeah. Mm. Not could though. Not at that level. No. And what about Madsen? Oh, oh, fuck me. Honestly, I was – I couldn't believe it. Mm. I could not believe that that – like, I get it. We're all human. Mm. Bewley stored the bike in the semifinal at yeah. the gate line. I yeah. get that. That happens. I can get – I can cop that. It's a wrong helmet color. Yeah. But fuck, you tell you what, Leon is no slouch. Like, he's yeah. he switched on. He's the next number two in the world. Mm. He shouldn't be making those mistakes. You see, he nearly took out – who was on gate four? Wolfie. He nearly took out Wolfie because he ran out. He didn't have any brakes to pull up. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly. what that feeling's like. Oh, I do. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do, yeah. He had to jam the foot peg into the dirt to try mm. and pull up and end up on, on Wolfie's lap. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was a real shame for him. Yeah. Mm. No, it, it wasn't nice. And I, I don't know if you've – have you seen this metaverse? No, I haven't looked into it, no. You haven't looked into it? No. Well, sit back and buckle in because I'll let me enlighten you. Go on. I've done it. Yeah. I've I've signed up. I've, I've – you, you can you, – it's it's very it's um it's very strange if you've never done anything like this before. But you actually control a little person, and you walk around this two story room. Is this the new Spillway GP Metaverse, Metaverse app? Yeah, okay. So you you take control of a person, and mm. you can you can dress yourself up how Beating you want, them. right? And um, you walk around, and you look at the TV, and you look at the live stream, or then you can walk over to the wall, and there's the past world champions, and it's 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 very insightful. There's a yeah. lot of good info there. There's diagrams of the bikes and parts and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Anyways, the best part about this is, and which I absolutely love, is you go and you can watch the live screen stream on the TV, 
Mm -hmm. but you can flick between any camera angle you want mm -hmm. and you can watch the whole meeting that is so cool. from a specific point of view. Mm -hmm. You don't have to watch the live stream with Kelvin Tatum and Chris Louie. Yeah. You can, you can, if you wanted to, and I did this a lot, I actually put my phone, I was, I was watching it on the telly, yeah. watching Kelvin and Chris yep. and the racing, but on my phone, I had Jack Holder's pit cam constantly. Oh, right. Yeah, this is through the through the telecast. Through the meeting. Yeah, this lovely. is on my phone on this app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and Chris was in the in his booth. Yeah, which was great to see. Yep. So, I was watching Jack ride mm. and I was watching Chris in the pits. Yeah, cool. I felt like Big Brother. I'm sorry, Chris, if you listen. I was watching you, mate. It was, yeah. It's such a cool thing because you see snippets mm. on the um, – on the live telecast, mm -hmm. but then I'm actually got it and I'm watching Chris's reaction yeah. and I'm seeing Chris is riding the bike with yeah. Jack. Yeah. It was awesome to see just such a good insight mm. into that. The behind the, behind the racing. Yeah. That's, yeah. I've got to do that. You like, have to yeah. do that. But the reason I bring this up is because when Madsen mm, okay. went back into the pits, I saw he was pissed. Yeah. So I've quickly changed my view from Jack to Madsen yeah. and Madsen's in there and he's throwing shit. Yeah. He's picked up his chair. He's thrown it at the wall. He's throwing goggles and gloves and venting his frustration. It's his own fault. Was is he? Is I believe he responsible so. For his well, own color? you. I, I didn't see the pit cam prior. Yeah, right. I only saw it once he's got excluded and gone back in. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't seen whether the mechanic gave him the wrong helmet. That's what I'm. Yeah. Or he's just grabbed the wrong helmet. He would have to own it. Yeah. You have to own it. Yeah. I don't think he's got someone in his corner like a like a. Pete Adams for Woofy or mm. or um, Greg Hancock for, yeah. for Vozniak or you know Jason Doyle uh, Jason Crump for Lambert. I think he's runs his own show. Yeah, right. Okay. So I can only imagine he's just venting with to himself. Well, I seen um, after Bewley had an awesome ride, the cameras followed him in, and he took his helmet off, put it on his helmet stand, and then it must have been the bloke looking after his program. It was the Polish fellow that used to work with Ty. His name slips in mind, but anyway, he he was communicating with um with Dan, and okay. he must have said you were in blue for the next one. So he took his blue helmet off, yeah, and put it on his table. Yeah, right. Okay. And I thought exactly that. Mm. I related that with Madsen to think, well, he can't get that wrong. You'd hate if that because he's already got the right helmet in his hand. Yeah, you'd hate mm. if that was a bum steer. Mm. Yeah, dead right. But. But again, just a really cool insight. Definitely get on that app and have a look. For sure, awesome to see. As well as you can look at the the um, the starting marshal view. Mm. You could look at the drone. Yep. You can look at the the aerial shot. Yeah. The only downfall to it was you can't like if you want to go back and watch the meeting now. Like I haven't figured out if you can pause and rewind. Yeah, I think right, it's yeah. just a continuous feed, and when mm -hmm. the meeting finishes, mm -hmm. then the meeting starts again, and yep. you just keep watching it. Um. But there was only about eleven pit cams. Okay. Certain people you couldn't, couldn't see, see, which yeah. was a bit annoying because there was a few times like I wanted to see Freddie's pit cam mm -hmm. after he stalled it mm -hmm. or after the bike failed, whatever. I yep. wanted to see what his reaction What's going was. On? Couldn't couldn't get Freddie's, but you had most of the yeah. most of the top guys. But um, got to yeah. get on that. It's so cool. Yeah, we'll do. Um, nice to see Lambert back on the on the podium again. I think. I think we've. I've been rallying for for Lambert for the last past couple of months. I think he's going to win his first Grand Prix this year. He's, he's, he's edging threatening. closer. He's threatening, isn't he? Mm. He's, he he was making some good passes. And I think you've got it coming up here later in, in the heat ten. Was he part of that? And no, not heat ten. He was a part of. Um, well, he's the semi. Yeah, there you go. In the, in the first yeah, semi. Yeah, yeah. Now he was making old Robert. He was making some good good passes. Mm. Um, I was watching him closely because I because he he's one of the the best gators, and I'm thinking what what's going on. Because he's not making them consistent starts. Yeah. And last night in Warsaw on um, Sunday morning our time, these these one-off tracks, the starts are so – because it's a temporary track, the, the ruts get so deep because yep. the, the material is loose. It's not there for long. It's and not compacted as it's hard. It's not compacted and hard. So um, I don't know whether you've seen you, – you've seen a lot of the – a lot of the, like the, the Gators Lambert, or all of them really, they would have a great start. And all of a sudden, someone would just get left behind. Mm. Like there was another rider got left behind. It was nearly asleep. I think it might have even been Smarslik in one of the races. Yeah, it was. He he it like was. absolute made a shocker, and that doesn't normally happen on a normal uh. speedway track. It's these temporary tracks that 
sometimes your bike can get stuck in these ruts. Yeah. It's just a bit of a hit and miss. Yep. You don't really you don't see a smarz like or a Lambert get their ass kicked on a start, do yep. you? They're always there somewhere. And it's it's these these um, one off tracks. They're so unpredictable. Yep. And I'm not a massive fan. I never have been. I never really spoke about it. And I'm thinking 99% of the boys do it. How they they dig a hole for their back wheel. Yeah. Okay. And it's like they're they're sort of creating this ramp. Well, I think that's what they're trying to do. I've actually never spoken to. I might have a chat to Maxi or one of the boys or um, um, Doyle or even um, Jack later this later in the year, and the boys come home. When they go up to the tapes, they sit their front wheel on the tape. Yep. So they're forward, they're well forward, and they they drop they, their clutch yep, and they're they spin it and up, they're yep. digging they're, they're digging a bit of a hole with their back wheel, and then they're backing out of it, mm. and they're starting behind it, and then drive and then on top of the rut, like on, yeah, on yeah. the on the back side, on the back it. side, mm. and. I'm not a massive fan because for me, when they drop the clutch, they're getting a jump, admittedly, because yep. the bikes, you know, getting getting that, it's got, the back wheel's actually going down, yep, rather than go forward, mm. and then not only does the back wheel go down into the hole rather than the bike go forward, the the back wheel's actually bouncing, it's it's coming, the bike's bouncing, so yep. it's going down, and yep. then it's reacting where it's hit it's hit the burn that the wheel created yep. in front of it. And then the bikes so there's, there's nothing smooth about the about the, the drop off. Yeah, I'm with you. There's nothing it's very smooth aggressive. About it. I don't mind if they back up on a on a ramp, but they've got to make sure the rut's smooth after that. Right. You know what I mean? So when I see them packing their ramp in, packing their ramp in, and then they go eh, 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 and they dig that hole, I'm thinking you've got to fix that up because mm. you're not getting a smooth jump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's just for me. It's I've just never really liked that. I've mm. I don't remember that being in my era. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I see that, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't think I like. I would like to do that. But in saying that, now you say that every rider does it, so it must be a tested trial. This obviously works because everyone is doing it. But and it must have been in the last few years. You would think oh, it's been going on for some time now. Yeah, but even in heat one, where there's no ruts, mm. everyone's just got a fresh patch. I still see riders digging a hole mm. prior to the drop of the clutch. And I'm thinking that's – it's it's making the bike jump and not yeah. go smooth. Mm. It's it's you, you, need, you need that traction. You need constant traction. Constant traction. You, constant don't, you traction. don't need a little bit of air while you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I, I've noticed that and I've been meaning to say that for a long time. I'm not a massive fan of this digging holes for mm. the back wheel. Mm. And these one-off tracks really makes it unpredictable. Yeah. For the gating, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Some riders are just getting left behind. I don't think it's their fault. It's yeah. just circumstances. Well, Doily being one of the best gators, mm. when he does come back to Australia, mm. when I get him on, I'll hit him up. I'll yeah. ask him, yeah, because yep. uh, he'll he'll know the answer. Absolutely, he's been doing it for a while. Um, yeah, Wozniak, Buchenbeck, they both put in a great performance. Yep. Um, they both made their first semi, mm-hmm. which was nice, and I even. At the end was is it Abby Stevens, mm-hmm. the um, British commentator yep. and reporter, and um, Greg Hancock were were talking at the end, yep. and um, by the looks of it, uh, he's got Wozniak working pretty well at the moment, mm. and I, I'm assuming Wozniak's gotten Greg involved since qualifying for the sure. GP. Yep. Do you do you know of did he do much work before or you? I'm not aware. I'm not yeah, at all, okay. mate. No, I don't know. The con- Greg was, has been with Magic for a long time. Yeah, right. With Vinoski, but he's, this just seems to be his first year with Wozniak. But I yeah. don't know. He's. I did hear Greg say to Abby though that you know he's mainly working with him on his starting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. And that actually showed he made yeah. some great starts mm. at, in Poland in Warsaw the other night. Mm. His speed's not there yet, mm-hmm. which is understandable. He got overtake. He 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 trapped or he he. He made the first corner a few times, but then he got overtaken maybe yeah. a lap or two in a few times. Yeah, that'll come. Yeah, that that'll, that speed will come and that track craft will come. But mm. whatever Greg's doing with him with his starting, it's it's working because he's getting he's getting out there in front. Yeah, mm. um, Buchenbeck, he's he's entertaining. Well, he's great to see, and you are well, come exactly on, right. Give it to me. <laughs> you <Yeah>. boys <laughs> weren't that confident with me when I was saying to you, yep. as soon as he was set as a wild card mm. end of last year. I said, watch him. You did. And I and I understand why everyone was, you know, <laughs> yeah. this and that. And, you know, I, I admit Max Frick is should be there. Yeah. Yep. He's not a like for like for Max. Yeah. He's coming. Mm. 
but he's not a like for Max. But I, Hulkenberg's a great, and I said that to you, didn't I? You did absolutely. I said this kid will, like I said, he he will be a top ten. He should be top ten. Yep, for sure. Well, uh, we'll just quickly look at this um, where he is placed at the moment overall because uh, he's sitting in seventh. Yep. He's gone 11th and he's gone nine. So he, he's made semifinals both times yep. on both occasions. Well, if he keeps that up, he's going to finish in the 10th, mm. which, which and, would be a good I, year for him. And I think you said top 10 is a good year. It is a good year. I think it's a great Firstly, year. Firstly, a full year. Yeah. And nobody really expecting him to even be given a wild card. Yeah, exactly. So if he can finish in the 10, mate, that's a result. And he's entertaining. Like yeah. apart from his results, mm. he's great to watch. His mm. style, yep. he he hangs off the side of it. Yep. Um, he he's so cool to watch. So I'm, I'm stoked. He, he made another semi. Um, we will get to the semis in a bit uh, in more depth. But uh, Madsen, Kubera, they had absolute stinkers. I think mm. I've got here. Uh, Madsen dead last. Two points he scored all night. Kubera, second last. Yeah. Two points all night. Just unheard of, isn't it? You can't imagine. And it's like, you know, Madsen was only an ex-number two in the world three years ago. Yeah. Dominic Cabrera, we've all wrapped him. We all, all th- I think all four of us had Cabrera in our top eight I think, for yeah, Warsaw. Absolutely. He just seemed to be overturning. He didn't, the other night on this small track in, in Warsaw, I, try, I watched him back a few heats trying to think, what is it? What's going on? Yeah. He's better than this. And he, he just, he wasn't fast. Just mm. period. Turning too tight. People coming around him, underneath him. Yeah, it was – he had a shocker. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was quite disappointed to see that. Uh, yeah, it, it's definitely not like them too, considering both of them made the semifinal mm. last week. Um, Ty, again, slightly improved on his on his Croatia performance, um, which where he said he got an 11th. He had a heat win. He had a second. He had a third. And he had two lasts. So very, very up in the air. Well, did you see his interview with – Abby, mm-hmm. very honest. It's probably the most honest, and I think Abby recognised it, the most honest we'd seen Ty for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Ty over the years has been a bit tricky as an interview. Yes. People interviewing him. Yeah. Just in his nature, a bit like Shane Van Gisbergen and our mates, we had supercars okay. down there. Yep. Um, media's, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, like some of the questions that people ask, mm. some of these guys, it's they don't, you know, they hear it all the time and it gets yep. a bit frustrating for the riders or the drivers. But it was, yeah, Ty was very honest. Mm. He's he's probably right. He he made that that uh, area in, when he made that start off gate one. Yep. Got himself in a no man's land and then got passed by everyone. Yep. He probably would have made the semis and who knows from there. Yep. But the signs of his speed is coming. Yeah. Like he's yeah, look absolutely. at his results for Sheffield. Yep. Three 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 three. three. Um, yeah. So um, I I we need him up there. Yeah. And like when he wins a race, he wins a race, doesn't he? Mm, he does. Like he's gone. Yeah. So he it must be frustrating for him. And. You look at his first two rides, second and first. You would think, leading into his third ride, you mm. thought, "Fuck, ties on here. Mm. He's he he could go all the way tonight," you know. And that's then he went duck egg, duck egg one. Like how he rides is not a reflection of the points in this meeting. Definitely not, and the same as the week before. Mm. But it's saying that as well. It's a credit to the Grand Prix of how compressed it's getting. Yeah. Because yep. you can get a rider like a three-time world champ who's going to get his ass kicked if yes. he's not on it. Yep. If he makes a boo-boo on the first corner like he did, mm-hmm. he get passed. Mm. Maybe in the years gone by, he probably could have overcome that. But today's getting tougher and tougher. Yeah. It's great. Was it, um, if you could cast your memory back a couple of years ago, I, I vaguely remember a Nicky Pedersen interview. And did someone ask Nicky, who's the fastest rider you've ever rode against? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I remember him saying, this might have been 2017 or something. I remember Nicky saying, Ty Wolfenden has the most natural speed Mm. I've ever come up against. He's he's the same mould as Dan Bewley. Yeah. When they're out in front. Mm. Yeah. You you can just see the way Bewley does it exactly the same. And you see him when Bewley won that race by, like he nearly lapped everyone the other night when he won his race. Yep. They just... They yeah they do they nick the fence and Smarslik does it a lot. Jason Crump, one of the first I ever seen do it. They do hit that fence going in and gives them that little bit of a shoot. But Ty and and Bewley have this little knack of just keeping the bike upright. Yeah, just just momentarily coming into the turns, mm-hmm. which gives them that little bit extra more speed. Mm-hmm. And they also know how to pull it. Once they do that, they know how to pull the bike up, but not overturn. Mm-hmm. They can keep the bike the momentum going, and that's a bit of a knack to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so Ty has that and Bewley has that. So, yeah, when they're both out in front and the, and the conditions are right, yep. look out. There's no chance. Yeah. No chance. So, yeah, Nicky's, Nicky would be dead right there, yeah. Yeah. Um, who else? Oh, Mikel Mickelson finished ninth again, mm. just missed out on the semi final. He's another quick kid when he gets going. Yep. Mm. Absolutely. And I think you 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 used the word frustrating. Mm-hmm. With with Mikkel Mickelson last week, and I same, can't disagree. Same this week, eh? It would, and like we're frustrated because we we see a race win, we see two seconds, mm. but then he can run a last and a last. Yeah, like, yeah, I I I think Mikkel Mickelson's young. I think he might only be twenty six. Right. So he's twenty seven, maybe. So he's got many years. Yeah. To go. Yeah. But um, again, he's like a hook and back. He's so entertaining. Yeah. He, he can is. hang off the bike, and he can. Beat people. He he um he passed Jack Holder on the line mm. in one of the heats as well, yep. and I think Jack only got a third place. So that was for a second. Um, yeah, I just I just think I just want him to be consistent because I love watching him, and he is so frustrating to watch. Mm. But I guarantee he feels just as frustrated. If if I was in Mikkel Mickelson's corner, like a John Jorgensen is with Ty Wolfington, and there's that uh, like. Crumpy's been in Lambert's corner. I would be working on his track craft because he's so yep. fast. Yep. But he loses way too much time and speed coming out of corners for me. Okay. He's always battling the bike coming out of the corner. You see, he's got his right foot off foot off the peg. I'd be I'd nearly get a rubber band and and, and attach and it and attach it to his foot peg because he's he's always I don't know he, he's always wheeling and he's always having to come off the throttle coming out of the corner. Yeah. Because he's fought, he's battling the bike. It's wobbling. It's lifting. He's having to shut off. And a lot of guys do it, mm-hmm. but he's the he's the bloke for me that does it the most. Right, okay. And I, he's obviously got good equipment. Mm. He he can trap. He's got it all. I think he I think his race craft needs tuning up. Yep. But, yeah, and we know he can do it over over a season long race because he's a he's a two or three time Euro champion. Euro champion, yeah. And that's no that's not much different to a Grand Prix series. Yeah. So there is a there is a top three top four rider in there. In Mikkel Mickelson, I believe. Mm. It's just in, in time. Yeah. In time. Yeah. Um, anything else I've wrote down? Oh, Vashlik. Uh, massive improvement from last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing about Vashlik that I, I love to see was, apart from Doily, Vashlik was the only other rider in the field to win three races in the in the heats. In the heats, yeah. You know, he went through the heats pretty, um, pretty strong. Passing people too. He was. Yeah. He, he was riding the boards. Yep. Had a lot of speed. I remember there was a, cu- a couple of months ago, there was a British rider, might have been Richie Worrell, I think, who was complaining about body weight. Okay. Now I don't, I don't know how heavy uh, Vashalik is or Mickelson or Doily, but they're very tall. Mm-hmm. Now I look at if what comes with height is extra weight. Sure. Vashalik ain't short. He. Yeah. Okay. And and, and Mickelson as well. I yep. I just think, how do they get the bike working so good when they're <laughs> when they're oh, well, their setup's different. They've got their handlebars are in a different position of jack holders. Their seat, mm. the Spiro bike is totally adjustable. Mm. In, totally. Like you can move your seat up, down, forward, back, whatever you want. You, um, your handlebars up, down, high, low. It, yep. There's a wide. Yep. There's a lot of things you can do to accommodate you mm. know, the body. Um, Michael Lee was probably taller than all of them and he was yes. 1980 world champion. Yep. yep. Brit- British rider. Mm. Real lanky on a bike. Yeah. Dennis Sagalis. Mm. Real, real lanky on a bike. Um, in the in the eighties for America, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they 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 get around it. They adjust the bike to suit. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Tom, Thomas Gollop was one as well. He was quite mm. tall and lanky, wasn't he? Um. So yeah, no. I, just a couple of blokes there. I just wanted to discuss. Uh, give maybe some gate statistics. You could really see that yellow was working mm-hmm. quite well. Mm-hmm. Um, white was white and blue. Look at blue. Two race wins all night. Yeah. White three race wins three. all night. Yeah. Yep. Incredible. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Gates one totally opposite to Croatia the week before. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was it, not easy when you when you got first choice in exactly. a semi or a final. Mm. Thinking what do I because gate one is is the default yes. normal. Yep. You normal yep. okay or gate one. Yep. And who was it? Someone chose gate four in the semi. Um, was it? Oh shit. Uh, and and it give it gives Smarts like gate one. Yeah. Shit. Who was that? Who was that? Was it Lambert? Was maybe? that Robert? Might, might have been Lambert. I can't can't remember. It's but yeah, pretty, I, it's pretty ballsy to do that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, but it was good. Yeah, and you see, and gate and gate four, it only come last twice in twenty three yeah. heats. 
like yeah. you know, as opposed to Croatia where gate mm. one was was working a lot. So that's my favorite gate. Gate four. Yeah, it's my favorite gate. You can it just suits you. It just suits the way you sit on the bike because your yeah. head turns right. Yeah, you're right close to the magnet. You can see everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's just as a as a as a physical feeling sitting on a bike. Mm. I felt the most comfortable on gate four. Yeah. yeah, just it's just the mechanics of it. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Righto. Well, we do have a couple of videos here I want to dissect. Um, one of them being the Heat Ten, which, in my opinion, in my opinion, this was this was ride of the night. This was race of the Heat night. Ten. I thought this was fantastic. We just spoke about um, Hukenbeck. Yeah. How good he is, and you know what? Th this race shows how good Madsen can be mm -hmm. because he was in this fight. Mm. So we'll start this. Yeah, well, that gate four. Gate four was working, wasn't it? <laughs> Bouncing off the wall again. Yeah. Smarzik's just an animal. <laughs> it's just nuts. How they stay on, I don't get. And you know, Madsen never went away. Madsen was always there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Again, bounce, just no one in front of him. Yeah, just, they purposely do that. So you reckon that was on purpose just then? Yeah, yeah. You just They just they just open the bike up coming down the back straight or coming down either straight. Yeah. They just open the bike up and uh, they, just, they just allow the bike to kiss the fence. Yeah, okay. And they just feel it gives them a little bit of little bit of speed running into the turn. Yeah, right. And you'd, you'd think, just me looking at that, and I've never rode the bike, I would say the faster you do that, the more safe it is, like the, the better it is. Like I feel like yeah, if, yeah. if you, you do that at speed, mm. like Smarzik was flat out, yeah. flat bicky, bang, on the fence into the corner. Mm. I think if you if you shut off, mm. that's when it could. Yeah, they don't turn left. <laughs> get a bit dangerous. And they've got no brakes to help you. So yeah. no, you, you steer them with the back wheel yeah, yeah. And, the, and the throttle. Yeah. yeah. Um, another one I want to get in here. Oh, Hookenbeck. Um, yeah, with Hookenbeck, it, they have they didn't say on the telecast what his injury was, mm. why he's pulled out of the of his of the rerun. Yeah. Now the only thing that worries me with that is if it's concussion, mm -hmm. he won't ride this weekend. Oh, is that, is that a law they got? If it's a concussion, it's eleven day layoff period. Well, I to me when I looked at it slowly, I think Chris. Louis and Kelvin might have mentioned maybe it's a classic collarbone, collarbone. In injury, but I, I I replayed it. Looks like he's it's a head injury to mm. me, not not actually a shoulder injury. And if that is the case, he smacked his head. If that's the case, it's eleven days you're not allowed well, to ride. That's not good for the German. Grand Prix. So, for example, this actually only happened recently to the the young Finnish rider mm -hmm. Antti Vuolas. Right. do you know him? I don't know. He rides for Workington. Yep. And he was doing the um the European Championship qualifier, mm. and he had to miss out. Yeah. And he was a red hot favourite. Yeah. Yep. So, um, let's have a quick look at this. There we go. And Doyle has just given him nudge. Jack's, Jack's got to the corner first. To me, that there, he hasn't landed on his shoulder first. He's actually landed on his backside and then rolled. And he's, I think it's head. Yeah, well, we see it here now in slow mo. I mean, the whole incident was just it was a classic bunching of the first corner. Yeah. And that's why you've got that. The referee's got that option to throw them all in for, yeah. for exactly this. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Doyle's nudged, Doyle's him. nudged him. He would just watch this. Watch his, over where's his first contact? It's his backside. And then his elbow. And then his elbow, then, and then his, his head. head. I don't think that's collarbone, personally. No. See, when he took his suit off, his elbow was all cut up. Yes. But I think it's more of a – he knocked himself around. And and when he was walking back to the pits, he wasn't holding his arm. No. He wasn't hold like, you know, the typical if it was an, yeah. shirt up mm -hmm. under the arm. It was none of that. He, he, went, he went and sat in the pits and he just put his fan on his face. And I think that was just to block the camera. He was just, he was, he was devastated. Yeah, yeah, he was hurt. But like I said, if it is concussion, he, that means he's not allowed to ride this weekend, which is his home Grand Prix yep. in Lancelot. That's just a very unfortunate situation, the whole thing there. Mm. I mean, Jack made a brilliant start yep. and Hulkenbeck just got totally squashed out. Yeah. 
You know, you can't blame anyone. It, look, if where where was to, where was he to go? You can't, and and that's why it was all four back. Yeah. No one was excluded. It was just a pure first corner racing incident. Yeah. We've most of us have been in that situation, mate. Yeah, that's that's the rule. That's why the rest got that option to, to put everyone because you've got four riders all coming into one spot and something's got to give. Yeah, and just and unfortunate that that Hookerbeck got hurt there. And Hookerbeck made a great start. Mm. You know, if Jack didn't dive across, yeah. you'd argue that you know there's every chance Hookerbeck could. Yeah, I think, but it's like we know how good Doily was that night. Yeah, I even though Hookenbeck might have might have momentarily was in front of. Let's put Jack aside for a minute. Mm-hmm. Who's not? Let's say Jack didn't make the start. Doily would have come out of that corner in front, I think, because they did have a little nudge, and and, yep. you, and you're doing that. Yep. You when you do leave the tapes, you've got elbows and everything going, and sure. you're you're prepared to go to war. Yeah, yeah. To get that first corner. Yeah. And so you do off. You often bump. Yeah, we always bump coming yep. into the first corner. Yeah, so Dawley's not going to give up. He's not. No. Gonna, he's not going to pull the throttle off there. So no. just that little bit of movement, that little touch there with Dawley and Hookenbeck. Yeah, that would have put Hookenbeck in the middle of the track. Yeah, and Dawley just would have snuck around the yep. inside. And and from memory, Dawley had done that all night. Mm. If, whenever he was on one of the the, the t- first two gates, yeah. red or blue, yeah. he was always moving people out yeah. all night. Yeah, so it would have been no different. But unfortunately. Yeah. It's just such a shame to see that because he was riding so well. Yeah. Let's hope that he can – yeah, that's, see that where the head hits there? Yes. That's I feel for the – So the only downfall there is, like I said, fingers crossed. It hasn't been announced yet. I looked on the FIM website. Nothing yeah. has been said about his injury. Yeah. But if it is head – be a real shame. He, I don't think he'll be able to take part in the um, – Yeah. In his home Grand Prix, which would be devastating, especially being the first Grand Prix since 97 in Landshut. It's been that long. We'll get oh, to that. We'll get to that next episode. But yeah, yeah okay. it's been that long. That was yeah, the last yeah, one. Yeah. Yep. But we will watch the rerun. Mm-hmm. See our boys go at it. Yeah. Now this is where Doyley found that speed that he had in sixteen up yep. the inside. Yep. Because Jack made another brilliant start. Just where does he pull that speed out of? Yeah. And then see, run Jack wide there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be Nothing fun. serious. Yeah. Nothing massively dirty. Yeah. He pushed Jack into some heavy dirt. He's ri- he's ripped a cover off on yeah. Jack's left rear side. Yeah. But see, now it's on for young and old with Lambert and, and Jack. This was a great little battle for second. Mm. And I think off camera, Doily had a big mistake <laughs> yeah, he right did. there. But Jack got passed not only here by Lambert, on the outside going to the finish line. Yeah. But twice. And look, and look how far in front he is. Yeah, it's... Pretty cool how Lambert made all that ground in one lap. Yeah. Like yeah. when Jack watches this back, I think, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like here, look. Mm. He's miles away. Did, okay. How does he? Okay, so did Jack have to turn that hard? He's doing it on purpose because it's the shorter route to the to the finish line. Yeah. So you reckon he, he, he in his um in his peripheral, I know he couldn't see mm. it, but he could hear that Lambert was coming you around. You imagine him. so. So you reckon Jack turned hard? On purpose. On your last lap, that's yeah. that's pretty a normal thing to do. Yeah. Because the finish lines is only twenty meters in front of you, less. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's it's a pretty normal to, and that's the shortest way to the to the finish line. Yeah. Yeah, it's just credit to Lambert for not giving up and yeah. And somehow he he got him by fifteenth, didn't he? Yeah. Like it was nothing. Yeah. But Jack must be gutted because that was the second time that happened to him. The same instance. I think Nicholson got him. Was it Nicholson? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Same Nick thing. Got done on the outside. Mm. Might have been Wozniak. Oh, it could, it could have been one of those blokes. I, I don't remember. But, yes, that is the second time. It's very, Especially on these one-off tracks, very unusual to, for that to happen. What Jack done, you would normally do every day of the week. Yeah. And you'd be across the line first. So yep. he got unlucky twice there. Or the other guys just found some dirt that was – Yeah. And, and got onto the line. And you know what? Uh, shame for us Aussies because we would have loved to have two Aussies in the final again. But – that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yep. Uh, and then semi-final two. This was also a very entertaining race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure in this one, Bosniak, he's out in front for a little while. Mm-hmm. Gate three mm-hmm. in, a fo- in a semi yep. to make a start like that. It's awesome. Look at that. He's, he's not fast, though. No. Bosniak's not quick. No. Well, that's going to come. Mm. That, that that speed and track craft. Yeah. Look at that. Lap two. 
first half of lap two, he's in first. Mm. Now look at him, they just pick him off one by one. Yeah. Look at Bachelet around the boards. Well, it's welcome to welcome to World Speedway, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. That's a, it's a typical lesson, really. Yeah, and left Bewley inside up, outside. There's Bewley up underneath him. Mm. He would have been, yeah, chewed up, spat out. I think I the same the same thing happened to Sherniak in one of his rides where he yes. was leading. Yep, the under twenty one champion. Yes, it was the same thing. I think everyone eventually got past him, mm. and they gapped him. Even third place gapped him, and yep. it was like, you know, okay, you're in a different race now. Exactly. Yeah. But very entertaining. Feel for Vosnia. His gating was sensational. He had no speed. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, you can't, it's hard to teach speed. Yeah. It's, oh, there's so much involved. Um, yeah. It's when you, seven years since Jason Doyle actually won mm -hmm. just a, a Grand Prix. Yeah. You try and think about that. And I'll tell you when it was. Do you know when it was? Was it here in, in Sydney? <laughs> it was, it was in Melbourne. In Melbourne. It was in Melbourne in 2017, the year he won the world title. Yeah. Now you try and put that. I remember going down to going down to one. This is just a lesson for the young kids. A rider, the young up and coming riders, and the kids that are going good. What they've got to do to become a Grand Prix rider, and then what they've got to do to actually to get anywhere near the top step, is in, in is Jason Doyle. Because he he was the best in sixteen for those those years sixteen seventeen, and to say that he's would you if at the end of sixteen you say end of sixteen was it sixteen or seventeen seventeen seven would you say to Jason Doyle in seventeen when he's standing on the podium you're not going to win another one of these until two thousand twenty four yeah nuts absolutely Crazy. nuts yeah isn't it yeah no one would believe you so for whatever reasons there'd, there'd be a million, million reasons for it. One of the main reasons is is hard work and competition. Mm. Everyone's after the same. All these world riders are after the same goal. Yeah. And not everyone can win. That's just sport. So for a rider like Jason Doyle to go without a win from, for seven years mm. is an eye-opener to these young kids that want everything now. Yeah. He, he's a perfect example of what hard work and determination and self-belief is of Jason Doyle of winning that meeting the other night. Yep. That's what it takes. So you've got a world champion in 16, was nearly 17, and then not win another one for seven years? Yeah. Like, that's how tough it is. Nuts. That's how tough it is. Yeah. So these kids today have got to understand yep. that nothing's given to you. No, exactly right. Ability alone is not good enough. Yeah. It's hard work and grind. Yeah. Look at poor Ty Wolfen at the moment. Mm. Fastest riders in the world and mm. battling. Yeah. It's hard work. Yeah. Nothing's given to you. And he's got the best equipment. Yeah. He's got all the natural talent. Yep. It's just, yeah. You it, just got to battle, it, battle it, and battle and chip away. And no one gives it to you. Mm -hmm. No one just lets you go, come through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. And then talking about the best the last few years, I've got some notes down here now, mm -hmm. is um, Smarslek. Like, he's been winning that often. And, like, remember, he was only beat for his fourth world title with Laguda. Yes, that's right. By a point or two mm. on his last night. So that champion, and that was the COVID year. Mm -hmm. He's been that strong. It's like he's been unhuman. Like, yeah. he's aura around the pitch to the right as if they let it get it to him. And most of them have because he's been dominating. Yeah. Full respect to him. He deserves everything he's got. He's, he's incredible. Yeah. But how refreshing, selfishly, to see he's actually beatable. Yep. Like this year, our two Aussie boys and the other riders, are, it seems like, has he come back a bit or has everyone stepped it up to him? Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Because he's he's beatable. Mm. You can see he's beatable. I, I love that. He's human. He's he's not the Lewis uh, Hamilton robot. Absolute no disrespect to Bartle Smiles. Like he's mm. amazing. Yeah. But to see, to see blokes beat him yep. is so good for us. Mm. So good for other riders to see it. Yeah. But I'm so proud of the other riders for not giving up. Yeah. Yep. Like you could just think, oh, how am I going to beat this kid? But they're all – it's – it's. I, I love it. Mm. I absolutely love it. Yep. I just think, wow, when – in my day when Hans Nielsen was that robot, at, for a moment there, and really sad story of Eric Gunnison getting injured at the time mm. he did in 88. But from then on in, Hans really had it on his own for a long time. And you just – and I remember sitting on the wall – on the on the seats and the pits there going to Oxford there 
in the early days watching him and thinking, man, no one can beat this bloke. Yeah. It's just an aura, you know, and eventually he got wore down. Yeah. And it's so refreshing mm. to see these current proper kids actually wearing him down. And I guess Speedway as a sport, as a fan base, is the winner. Mm. When, and I'm not saying that Smarzik loses, we're all winning. Yeah. That's not how, that's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But when there's competition, like, you know, there's, there's, I'm pretty sure on a, um, on a, I think it was Bet365, mm-hmm. there's a market for the world championship win. Yep. And Smarzik might be a dollar ten, a dollar yep. eleven. Yep. There's also a market for world championship without Bartos Smarzik. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not I've never heard of that in any other sport. Yeah. Okay. Imagine imagine there's a market mm. in the NRL that says the winner of the NRL without Penrith. Mm. Yep. It would never happen. Yeah, that's right. You know, so yep. Well, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm with you. I'm stoked, and and I'm not just saying that because it's two Aussies. Mm. Like I'm just I'm just happy that, like you said, Smarzik is human. Mm. You know, he he's not the the Lewis Hamilton of two thousand and in the two thousand tens. Yeah. You know, where he was unbeatable. He's um, it's just it's it's, it's throwing a spanner in the works at these new guys, the Hookenbecks mm. and the Vosniaks. Yeah. They're they're mixing it up a bit. It's it's actually the most interesting start to a Grand Prix series mm. in a long time. Massively. Massively. I think Dawley had this same season last year, but he crashed in those pivotal moments. Yep. His first two Grand Prix. He was in the mix, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. But I think to answer my own question about has Smarzlet come back or have these blokes caught him, I think they're catching him. Yeah. I think he's bringing them to him. Mm. He's been that good that they're all having to sit back and think, fuck, mm. what have I got to do? And I think, I think everyone's lifted their game yep. and they're catching him rather than him come back to them. Yeah. Yeah, which which is unreal. Yeah, which is absolutely unreal. So to think about that, then who's going to take it to? Him? Who's going to be the continuous rider that's going to battle him? Because mm. talking to Darcy Ward up in Queensland at Christmas, talking about Bartos in the World Championship, and Darcy is pretty adamant that really we don't see anyone beating him over over the whole season. Yeah, for quite some time. Sure. So who is going to beat him? So he's actually showing he's human. We these other kids, I don't. These other young boys have come to his level, yeah, and are actually taking points off him. But who's going to hang around? Who's going to take world championships off him? Mm. Who who are these kids? And it's the Sherniaks, the Kaberas, the Wozniaks. It's all these new kids coming yeah. through. Even Kavek had a few good rides the other night. He did. Had he did. Quickest time for and a he's, while. He's real young. He's only twenty two, I think. Yeah. Um. Of course. The, the Doyles and the Wolfenden's aren't going to be around. And the Freddies, they're going to retire soon. Yeah. Um, Love but, and Doyle been, been getting his, his kid again. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, we absolutely. all predicted this. Absolutely. That he was going to be the one one of the ones, him and Jack, to take it to, yep. to Smarzik this year. And that's turned out to be true. Mm. But um, Doyle's not going to be there for as long as Smarzik's going to be there. Yeah. So who is the next kids coming through? Bewley's frustrating me. Yeah. So fast, but. Oh man, he's he's. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him. Well, well, Lambert's one of those young guys. He's only about twenty six, mm. and 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 he's got a lot to learn. And and he's more. He's Lambert has been the most consistent British yeah, Grand Prix rider for the true. last two three years. That's true. He really has. Um, let's let's give Dominic Cabrera a little bit more time. I was gutted the other night. Mm. I yeah. had my, I'm mm. even Croatia. I sort of expected a whole lot more of him. I think Kabera made the semi final in Croatia. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, Mikkel Mickelson, he's another one who's only 26. You know, whereas the Leon Madsons and the Marsh, Martin Vasiliks, they're about 33, 34. Mm. So they're, they're sort of knocking on the doors of. of um, yeah, I'm talking the blokes behind them. Mm. So I'm talking Bewley, Jack Holder, um, what you said, um, Kabera. Yep. And then you got, well, Kabera, Cherniak. Yep. Wasn't it? They're probably a year or two behind Jack as well. Yep. I'm talking Max Frick. Mm. I'm, who's going to run with Smarzlek for yep. the next five years? Mm. Yep. Well, I tell you what, if, if Jack Holder goes the way he's going, he, he might be knocking him off the top. Yeah, absolutely. We, yes. And Jack's showing a lot more consi- consistency than Dan Bewley. Dan Bewley needs to be more consistent, mm. 100%. Mm. Um, yeah. Because if they don't, he's going to go past Ivan Major and. Exactly. And Over Tony for- Rickardson. Yeah. And not by a year, by a couple of years. Yeah. So it's it's refreshing to see 
these boys actually lift their game. Yeah. Well, I, I, can, I can say now he, he's for, he's through, if, if, if you've got one race and you're talking about the age, who's going to go with Smarslik? If you put Smarslik in the race, I reckon Lambert's one of those blokes. Yep. I reckon Jack Holder's is one of those blokes. Yep. Um, I think they're all very similar age. They're all twenty between twenty six and twenty nine. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack can put it to to Smarzik long term. One hundred percent he can. Yeah, yeah. One hundred percent he can. Um, well, we need Max back in the. We do back need in, Max. back in the thing. And you said Max is one of the form riders in the world at the moment. Yeah. He can I, do it. I would love to see. We haven't seen much of, and I know he, he's, he's um, Brady Kurtz. Yeah. Hey, fuck, he's on He's on fire. I, and I think I said, said this to Sam. Who's the other young kid from Mildura going well on Brady's team? Oh, J-Mo. J-Mo. J-Mo Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah. You could put J-Mo or Brady in that meeting the other night. Yeah. And they could take points off, yep. off them. Absolutely. It's just about getting that chance. So I really – we need those couple of boys self, as Aussies yep. to throw their hat in the ring mm. and – Get in this. Well, I know, I know Brady's to keep with Smarsley. I know Brady's about twenty eight, twenty nine. Well, he's know, got he's got to start getting in there. And I know Jamo's twenty four, twenty five. Well, he's got he's a young little again. bit of leeway. Yeah, but all Brady. in good time. All in good time. It'll happen. It'll come. Yeah, it'll mm-hmm. come. Yeah. Look, I don't, I don't think Doily made his Grand Prix uh, debut until he was about twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah, right. You know? yeah. So you know, all to come. Now, our little competition. Oh, the, these are the, the results. The Ozaki 8 results. I am not proud of how I went. I had an absolute stinker. Okay. Four of my eight didn't even make the semi. So you, can, well, so, you won last week. I won last week, but I had an absolute stinker. I had Freddie to win. Freddie to win outright. Yep. Freddie didn't make the semi. I had Madsen in the semi, didn't make the semi. I had Kubera and Cherniak. Madsen, Kibera, and Cherniak all come last, second last, and third last. Mm. <laughs> I had a fucking shocker. Shocker. Luckily, Vashalik got me a point there, which is great. He he snuck into the final, come fourth in the final. I had Zmarslik and Doyle and Holder all to make the final. but uh, So I only got one point for these guys because yeah. I never picked any of those blokes in their place. Yeah. So I got four points. Mm-hmm. I had ten points last week. Yeah. Four points this week. Yeah, a shocker, mate. How did you go? I don't know. How have you, how have you gone here? I've, I've, every, I've scored off everyone except for Kibera. You scored off everyone except for Kibera. That everyone that you picked except for Kibera made a semi. Mm-hmm. Um, you picked Smarzik to come second in the final, which you did. So there's your plus That's three true, points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you got Holder, Doyle, Hookenbeck, Lambert, Bewley, Vashalik. All correct, plus Zmarslik in his place. So you got nine points. So outside of Kibera, I, I got the top eight, everyone in the top eight. Uh, yeah, yeah, except for Kibera. Not That's bad. pretty cool. Uh, not Picking bad. The top, pick top seven. Yeah, it's not bad. That is good result. 100%. Mm-hmm. 100%. Uh, as he didn't do too bad, um, he the only correct placing he got was Hookenbeck, who mm-hmm. come eighth, unfortunate because he had that crash. Yep. So Anders got two points yeah. for that correct in the semis. But um, again, he he also had Kubera and Lindgren. Yep. Both of them didn't make the semis, but he also had Bewley. Um, and then Zmarzik, Doyle, Holder, Lambert. He had them all correct, but they weren't in the right position. Position, yeah. So uh, four, five, six, seven. He got seven points. Mm-hmm. And then Beverly. Beverly. What's he done? Bevo's done well. Bevo's gone nine points like you, but he's actually gone the one and two in the correct spot. Big, big numbers. So six, three and three, six yeah. points for, with two riders. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where he fell pretty short was he had Kubera, Madsen and Lingren and as Lingren well. Yeah. None of them made the eight. Yeah. So he got a, he did pick up a point for Holder and Bewley and Lambert. In the correct positions. Yeah. So a bit of a mixed bag there for the boys. And, and here's, the, um, here's the overall standing so far. Okay. So currently, you've you round one you got six points. Round two you got nine points. You're sitting on fifteen points. Yep. Round one in Croatia I went ten points. Round two in Warsaw I went four points. I'm sitting on fourteen. And is also sitting on fourteen. He went seven and seven. Seven and seven. Yep. And Beverly he's gone eight and nine. He's on mm. seventeen points. Stop that. The current overall champion. He's got some inside info there. Yeah, he definitely does. Doesn't he's he? He's talking to people. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah, percent. So he, mate, he's um, Beverly's. He's he's outright two points outright in yeah, front. Awesome, great. So and uh, when we do next episode on our Lenshut preview, yep, we'll he's he's sent in our voicemails yeah, and nice. we'll um get our Ozaki eight predictions for the next round. Yep. Well, 
that's it. That's our uh, that's our preview uh, review done for Warsaw. Very good, mate. So yeah, I don't think I've got any more notes here that I, I wanted to make mention of it. Anything else for us? <clears throat> No, nah, mate, no. It's just turned out to be a, a wonderful year. Yeah. We've got we've still got those big hitters winning and then losing races. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, which is which must be frustrating for them. But no, it's turning out to be a fantastic season. Yeah, for sure. Mm. For sure. Good, it's good un- for us fans. It's unreal. Mm. Absolutely unreal. Well, anyways, guys, if you want to get involved with the Ozaki eight and play with us, play against us, feel free, send in your top eight predictions and you know, I'll, I'll I might even have a look, see how many we get. If we get a good bunch of um of of the Heat One is sending in their top eights, I might even select a, a random fan, uh, a random Heat Oneer, and put him in on this table. Or you know, I'll, I'll work out something, guys. But if you want to get involved with the Ozarki Eight and and verse uh the Heat One blokes on the panel, okay. send in your top eight. It's uh, it's good fun. It's yeah. all good fun. I'm actually gonna make I'm gonna make a special hat. Okay, I'm nice. gonna get a, I'm gonna get a special hat. And it might have, you know, Heat One Motorsports on the front, and on the side it might have Ozaki Eight World Champion yeah, or something, something fun just for us to to yep. win. Yep. But there's also something in the in the pipeline for the next week's Ozaki Eight. I think I've got a I figured out a a totem. Do you know what a totem is? I think so. Like a like a, a thing to hold if you're winning. Like mm. remember remember after you retired in the Grand Prix there was the yellow race jacket. Yeah. Or there's the red plate. Yep. You're winning the championship. Yep. I've got something for us. Yeah, right. I've nice. got something for us. Love it. But it'll have to be after yep. Land Soot next week. Yeah, right. On. Anyways, guys. Good. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's episode. Remember, jump on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. What else are we on? TikTok. Uh, all that, guys. Jump on there. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, get your questions in. We're probably going to do another Methanol hotline, Methanol mail, probably in another, not next week, but the week after. Yep. Once the Grand Prix are having a, a better, maybe a two or three week break, yep. uh, we'll get another one of those um, episodes happening. So send in all your questions. I've got a lot of questions to go through. Yep, so sure. they're going to be good. Anyways, CW. Well done, mate. Thank you. No worries. See you guys soon. Bye. Tries the inside line as Wiltshire goes wide. Wiltshire's got it in the back. Fantastic ride from Todd Wiltshire. That was inspirational.